and glory. We sought and scared. God, except God built us everything about us 
shall become a vain. And one of the way he gives his people is through his word. The Bible said, he said, what is what he led in the book of Psalm. And yes, he healed our body. He healed our soul, healed our spirit. To his word, we receive direction. To his word, there's a lot of things that come into place in our life. In fact, for we to be blessed spiritually, we have to be guided by the word. Open your mind and begin to talk to God this evening. And say, God, reach me through your word. Do a new thing in my life through your word. Father, open your mind and begin to pray before of God. I have not come in my home. I have not come in my home. I come in the authority, yes, in the name of Jesus. The one that has sent me. Oh, my sin, the Yehovah. Lord, how our God and our King are depend on you. Lord, God, walk to me to reach your people. Let, oh God, make the people, Lord God, Father, Jehovah, like dead wood, God. And your work come, Lord God, like consuming fire tonight. Father, to consume away from their lives every shower. Your work come, Lord God, King of little bring transformation. Your work come, Lord God, to bring Lord God information. Your work come, Lord God, to bring salvation. Your work come, Lord God, to bring it all around. Hey, in the name of Jesus, we are never praise you like the God. We are exalted, Lord, we celebrate you, Lord. Reign not be exalted tonight. Hey, in the mother name of Jesus, have your way, Lord. Let every stone you have been broken down as a result of your word, the God, King of glory. Let the heart, the heart, the God, be broken down. Let the heart, the heart, be broken down. Let the heart, the heart, be broken down. The Bible said that it's for my your word. Your word, Lord God, is like a hammer that breaks into pieces. I have to call your word tonight. Let me begin to break that stony heart that has been confused again to receive direction. That can step here and call it. Thank you for healing through your word, God. Thank you for testimony, yes, Lord. Next shall be your holy name. Hey, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give a praise to the Holy Spirit. Thank you for bringing your people online. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, we exalt you tonight. Yes, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Amen. Let us be your holy name. Lord, you gave us a promise unto you. The garden of your people will be. We are to remind and gather your name. there you hide our midst. My father, by strength shall no man prevail. Lord, I look up to you. Eternal rock of ages, God, Jehovah. The glory of his joy. Lord, the source of our strength. The greatest teacher of our time. I'm asking walk to me to reach your people, Lord. Walk to me to reach your people, Lord. Walk to me to reach your people, Lord. It is one thing for me to have prepared. And it's another thing for you, Lord God, to breathe upon the word. It is when you breathe upon the word, become life, Lord God. I'm asking, let your word become life, Lord God, to souls tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for testimony and the result of tonight gathering. In Jesus' name. Lord, don't understand it hard. I ask God. Every misinterpretation to the word, God, that will come to me, I cancel that spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. I rebuke every evil power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Then you will bring your people online. Amen. I declare souls blessed tonight as men that are watching. Amen. Father, Lord God, through Zoom, to Facebook, Lord God, to Lord God, the YouTube, Lord God. Father, Lord God, those that will walk later, I declare them all blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Blessed be your holy name Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. If I can celebrate, you know why I'm celebrating? I am blessing the Lord. Lord. Mm -hmm. You know why there are great things the world of God comes to do in our life? Especially when you know and understand it. It is very, very vital, my dear brethren. You see, talking about the issue of life is that you might not have got all what you needed or what you want, anyhow you put it, you know. And it is that as long as, long as we live here or night, we will not be satisfied. The needs of man cannot be totally be satisfied. In fact, the more we achieve, we want to achieve more. That is why you see the rich want to get richer. The famous want to get more famous. On and on like that, want to continue to acquire, acquire. But in the midst of this, all at times, we might not even have all this. But knowing the word of God and having understanding of it, I want to assure you, assure you that you have it all. You have it all. What? The world is the same part of it all. You know when we say same part of something, that's like say this is your life. So permit me, I'm sorry to say this is your life. Just give me an example. Let's say this is our life, or let that your life or my life. Then this is the word of God. If we can have this word of God at the same part of our life, yes, this word of God, everything around our life, it results around our lives. We don't have problem. You might not have seen solution now. You might not have seen healing to that sickness. You might not have received that deliverance. You might not know what to go do about the present situation. There might be no money or no husband or no wife or no children. The one thing is that what you'll be rest assured. 
you will be rest assured that those things they, they have not come, they will yet come. Look at the story of Abraham, our father, father in the faith. The Bible said in the book of Romans chapter 4, he staggered not at the promises of God to unbelief. What is staggering? You know, when you are not balanced, you know, you fall right, you fall, you, 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 you fall left. You know, when a man is drunk, when the man has, you know, had too much alcohol, he's no longer stable. He, he goes like this. He goes like that. He can even fall forward or fall backward. Start staggering like that. That is how some people faith. They are staggering. Today you believe God, tomorrow you do not believe. The Bible says Abraham's faith was not like that. He said he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Why? Because he was really persuaded. He was rich as well. He allowed the word of God to control his life. Knowing that though he has not seen the promise, which is Isaac, though the vision that is Isaac, that God, it has not come. But one thing is sure that he will come. And as God will have not only Isaac, but many other children fall until today. You see, that is how Jesus came. And you and that will be recorded as a seed of Abraham. Because he stood. So God has sent me tonight to tell you that which you are in need of. God is saying you will not get only one of it. You are going to have abundance of it in Jesus' name. Amen. You are going to have abundance of that money in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, you are going to have complete earth in Jesus' name. Amen. You are going to have the right wife, the right husband. Amen. You are going to be at the right place at the right time. Amen. I see Jehovah God and I see you. Amen. I see Jehovah God and I see you. Amen. I see Jehovah God and I see you. Amen. When you have been as before I see you both first in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because if God be for you, who can there be against you? Only about our God is good news. Continuous and continuous, there is nothing bad in our God. That is why we call him the good God. It's good news. Day in and day out. Good news, good news, good news, good news, good news. So I see you hearing good news. Amen. I see good Amen. news coming your way. Amen. I see your good news coming your way. Amen. That news you have received, well, I throw away that letter. Throw that thing you have had, maybe through the phone call. Begin to wash it away with the blood of Jesus. Amen. It's good news that will follow it. Amen. Amen. You think Sarah didn't hear the evil, evil reports or the negative report of the daughter of those days? But they stood their ground. And at the end of the day, the good news not follow. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said all this to encourage someone. You know, I said in Charlotte, I'm very happy. I'm not so much excited because the word gives me the forward to go on. To continue to bubble. Amen. The midst of the circumstances and every other thing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So I said this to encourage us. But actually, where we are going to now is a different direction entirely. I know it's not something so different. It's what we have been hearing before. You know, for a while, we have been dealing on the topic that said the night season. The night season. I don't remember the night season means that when the ships are down. When it says that there is no more up again. When the beast is more than the income. When the children became, becomes rebellious. When the news from the daughter is not encouraging. The night season is a night, you see, you are pushing on with faith. The more you believe, the more difficulty, the, 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 the difficulty the situation becomes. The more difficult the situation becomes. The night season are the night where we wet our pillows with tears. The night season are times in our lives where we try to, 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 to explain our situation to men they don't understand. Even now the closest person in our lives who seems to be to our spouse or maybe you know to some of us that have best friend outside our, our home. You know try to explain yourself he or she does not get this is a night season. The night season is when our heart is heavy. It is heavy. The more you pray, the more it says that the, the situation becomes more difficult. That is what we have been looking at over and over some weeks now. And along that we were able to we were able to see, you know, uh, last week we saw that well, what do we do during this uh, our night season? Before I go, what do we do? I remember I established a point also that the night season is, is what happens to every man. No is exempted. Your righteousness does not stop your night season. Your faithfulness to God, your holiness. In fact, your wickedness does not stop your night season. Everybody has his, share, his own share of his own night season. It's just that the time I come is not the time your comes. And again, the way my own come and not be the way your own come. 
I told us, my might be childlessness. You all might be trying to get married. You know, the other person all might be trying to get a job. The other person might be trying to get finance or to pay rent. Every of all, or even document, every of all, it differs. It differs. On pleasant moment, after to everybody. You know, it's not unwise. What about we mock at each other? At our nice season. Or begin to say, maybe because of his or her sin. No, not necessarily so. It comes. I still remember again that I told us in the nutshell what in the nice thing can be summarized is a time of trials and temptations. So your, your, your righteousness, your holiness does not stop you from trying your trial period or your tempting period. Being when you go to school, you that you being a father's student doesn't make you not to face the exam. In fact, that is why you open more doors to the air for you to receive more exam because they want to try more your intelligence. You see that when the school does this, the, 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 more, the, the more brilliant you have, the more exams. You the, 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 at times, the, uh, the question they set for you, the exam that set for you, become even tougher than the one they sell from normal students because they know at that level you are no longer equal with others. So in case you are confused, I say, God, why me? Why me? That goes to tell you in the realm of the spirit, there's a promotion coming. Remember, we see land concerning Jesus that after he has mutated of the devil in the book of Matthew chapter 4, that yes, your hand, the angels came to minister to it. So I see angels ministering to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I see that blessing coming in Jesus' name. Amen. I see Amen. blessing coming in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Remember our anchor scripture, Psalm 30, verse 5. Sorrow may endure for a night. Joy comes in the morning. Sorrow may endure for a never said sorrow will not come. It will come. It is a sure banker. But that's not which, uh, because it will come, give a heart to fear. Be rest assured. Because also, I still remember, we'll look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. But I will say, God will not give us temptations that we, he knows that we cannot handle. He said, He knows that that temptation, through that temptation, it will make a way out uh, of escape. So, any temptation, trials you are passing through in a difficult period, God knows that what you got what it takes. You got what it takes to overcome. That you see a, 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 a um, what is it called a, a, an examiner or a teacher in school before they can give a true I mean a, 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 a sound teacher a good teacher a good examiner before they can give a student uh, a test to undergo a test they should have taught that students that is how normally it is that is why syllabus is called for at the beginning of every term. They should have taught the student that he will not come and try his or intelligence. So also God will not give us things he knows that we cannot. In that marriage, whatsoever you are passing through that, God knows that you have what it is. So in, in, in last week I told us, it, does, it is not wise for we to begin to compare ourselves with the other person. You know why the temptation that is facing you now is not facing your brother. It's because God knows that your brother doesn't have what it takes to go through that temptation. It is you that God what it takes. And funny enough, you will be looking at your brother as if what he or she is exempted. It is a lie. For the fact he or she is not crying out, doesn't mean he or she doesn't have, no, have what is undergoing. Everybody has his own share of his own life season. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So I just said all this to lay a foundation, a proper foundation. But we're going to be continuing to die. And you know, in the course of this time, we're able to see what do we not do in, during our life season. Should we just hold our hands for weeping or murmuring or complaining? No. None of these things are emulated above God expected from us. But rather, what does he expect for us? No, but one, remember, we're able to see you have to be a good friend of the world, the word of God. And we saw the book of Psalm 119, verse 105. We said, the world is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our paths. It is the word of God that gives you direction on what to do at that night season. That you will not be confused. You know, when God says yes, he says yes. No wonder his word says in the book of First Corinthians, he says his word, he are yea and amen. When he says yes, so when God is giving you direction according to his word, it's just a matter of time. It will be made man there. It's just like putting water inside the freezer. It takes, it's just a matter of time. That water eventually becomes ice at the end of the day. All situations be normal. No matter what it is, that water eventually in the freezer become ice at the end of the day. So also your situation will see calmness in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So you need the word. You need the word. You need the word. Yes, you need prophets. Yeah, you need assistance of your pastors and others. But these are there to just give you a guideline. Is a word actually that gives the perfect direction. 
I say this, please excuse me. I also, by the grace of God, God so used me in the prophetic claim and all this. But I say this not to bring down that prophetic ministry, but also to make something clear established in our heart. You cannot live your life centered on any prophet. Please excuse me. It is an error. I repeat myself, you cannot live your life centered on any prophet. Be whosoever. Be a friend of the world. Be a friend of the world. Psalm said, David says, in the book of Psalm 119, he said, your word have I hidden in my heart that how am I not see against you? It is a word. So I cannot emphasize that one because I've already taught on us on it in a few weeks back. Again, we were able to see last week also concerning prayers. That we need prayers in our night season. If there's a time you should pray more, is our night season. But at times, you know, I say, believer, the time we're supposed to pray in our night season, that is time we more, more, more. That is time we stay away from the gathering of the brethren. That God was supposed to receive encouragement from one another. Remember the book, the Bible said, I said, I think in Proverbs 27, verse 17, it said, Iron sharpens iron. So a man sharpens the contents of his friend. What do you need friends for? Later, we're going to see it later today. What do you need friends for? If a friend cannot be there to help you at the time of your need. We don't, I don't say that every time of your need is, it can always help. But at least once in a while. Some of us, we have friends that have become, you know, that, that have become burdened. Burdened. But yeah, who are going to say? What did they use their do? Because all they do in your life is minus, minus, no plus. Why is it that we see that I don't want to double into it now? So you need prayers. You need prayers. The time of, of, of murmuring is a time of separating and say, God, please intervene. I have no other source. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we're going to be seeing the word of God today. And also, what do we need in our night season? Apart from prayer, apart from the word, this evening I have written here is fasting. In the time of our, of, our, of our night prayer, is fasting. Is fasting, which should be off, often. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, you know, Hallelujah. when we're talking about fasting, there are different kinds of fasting. But basically, I want to work on what we all mainly do many a time, the kind of fasting we do, which is abstainers from, from food. Staying away from food during our difficult period. At least, you know, not throughout your lifetime, <laughs> you know, not throughout uh, 40 days or, you know, 100 days, no. At least sometimes to be brought in spare out, you know, out of your so much busy schedule. Because, you know, please, we have to use wisdom. See, we live in a, a, a world that is so busy these days than ever before. But then in the midst of so much busy schedule, you should be able to sweat out some time because you know what you are passing through. That they you normally know, say that what he that wears his shoe, no wear it pinches. You cannot continue to pretend that all is well, all is well, all is well. Yet you are dying in pain, you are dying in sadness. You are fast, you are fasting with the prayer is not is you are not getting sufficient result. They attach fasting to read. Praise the Lord. And I see God helping you in Jesus' name. Amen. I see God helping us in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. You see, uh, prayer. Uh, 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 sorry, fasting alone does not just do the work. You know, many of us will fast. At the end of the day, we do not see results. Have you got to take some time to ask yourself a question? Why? You know the reason, so I'm going to give us some solutions tonight by the help of the Holy Spirit. Say, during time of fasting, if your fasting must be effective, two things I want to establish tonight before us is that number one, your fasting must be attached to to eat the word and prayers. In the time of your fasting, the most at go along with your fasting, the word of God, the time you used to study the word of God and the time you give to prayers. These two, they work together. And in that, they are two sets of twins which cannot be separated. In fact, we call them, can you permit me to not call them conjugated twins? You no, know, when they say in English, the, the twins are conjugated, that is, they are joint. They cannot be separated. That is how the two of them work hand in hand. Prayer and the word during your time of fasting. They are very, very important. They are very, very crucial if you must succeed. You know what? During the time of your fasting, in pray, in, uh, when you are studying the word of God, the word of God goes to give you directions. Okay? Look, at, as you are sitting down with the word of God, 
God begin to speak to you through His word and say, okay, go to the book of uh, James and that. You know this person during the first, uh, time of fasting. Look at what he did. Or let's say, for example, the book of First Kings. You know when Elijah went on fasting for how many days? Okay, look at what he did. Look at what he observed. God begin to give direction. Go and do likewise, and you are sure of results. But if you don't go to God during prayer when you are fasting, God help you get some direction. Also. Uh, at last, through the word, how do you get such direction? Also, as you are in prayer, as you are fasting, you are praying. That's how God begins to open your eyes. At times, you can fall into a trance. You know what trance is? You are not asleep. You are asleep, a vision just flashed towards your heart. Or at times, you can be suspended. But the, some few minutes, few minutes, you are here in this world. You are not sleeping. But it's as if something, a record is being played before you. That's what they call trance. God is giving you direction concerning that situation. You know why? Because the book of Isaiah says that well, he has not asked God to seek you, ask us to seek him in vain. When we seek God, we will find him. Jeremiah 29 says that you shall come to it shall come to pass that you will from verse 13. When you and you will find me when you shall seek me with you all of your hearts. When you shall seek me with the whole of your heart, you will find me. But what we we'll do is that during our fasting and prayer, our schedule is so busy, it's too tight up. Imagine you are the type of one, so a, a, a person that is so busy. You, a, 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 normally, before you're fasting, a, a fasting you, you are doing a job of maybe 12 hours a day. And during your time of fasting, you are still doing that, that 12 hours. And that 12 hours you normally do before your time of fasting. You don't have time for the work. You don't have time for prayer. Because at the end of the job, you are spent out of all this. You know, no, it's no longer the same. All you just have to do, you just go to jump to bed and sleep. Then fasting and prayer, you, you, you go into fasting because of your challenges, your night season. And you don't still have time for the word and prayer. God, how do you expect God to reveal himself to you? How do you expect to get that directions? Check the Bible very well. People that fasted, they spend time in the presence of God. Your fasting becomes in vain when you are not spending time in His presence. Mm. It is the presence that makes the difference, which is the word and prayers that make your fasting become significant, that make your fasting to yield results. Let's look at the Bible, book of Isaiah, chapter 58. You are here before me. Please help me help. We want to do a quick study to now because of our time. Isaiah 58 verse 6. Look at what God says here. Isaiah 58 verse 6. Please go ahead, man. Okay, praise the Lord. Look at where we read. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 6. Where we just read. I will spend time to just breaking down one after that. God is talking to his people, which is you and I. He said, it's not this the first that I have chosen. To lose the bands of wickedness. Please, when do we lose the bands of wickedness? Is it not through our prayers? When we are saying the name of Jesus Christ, God, I command this thing to be loose. Every oppression of the way is not two prayers. Then you go ahead, verse 6, he said, to undo the heavy burden. When things are heavy upon our lives, maybe the bees or whatsoever, these are heavy, things are not going the way. He says, I want to heavy undo the heavy burden. And to let the oppressed go free. When we are under oppression, when it's, if you do not two prayers, we will let go and let to break every yoke. Do not two prayer that we say, I break every yoke of darkness, oppressing and prayer upon my life. So when there is no prayer during fasting, that prayer, there is no way, that, sorry, that fasting, there is no way it will work. It will not give any effects. So my advice to you is that when, when you want to fast, is that prepare your program very well. Make sure that during that time of your prayer, your time of work it might be reduced. Or if you are some of us who do job, we might not have that opportunity to reduce our time of work. But anyhow, anyhow you do it, but try to devote your time to the, to, to, to the prayer and the word of God. It is very, very important. Please, again, let's see the book of Acts. Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, we want to see a story of a man there yeah, from verse 1. Acts 10 from verse 1, you are there, help me out before me. Uh, 
Hallelujah. Okay, ma, thank you. Praise the Lord. It's okay. Look at the story we are looking at here. The man called Cornelius. The Bible says he was a devout man. He feared God. And the time came that he gave his time to prayers. And during his praying hour, that was when God spoke to him on how to go and look for a, a servant, Apostle Peter, on, so that Peter, he will invite Peter to his house. And if you read that, because of time, we cannot you read that, to Peter, you know, preaching the word of God, so he preaching Jesus, so he, he and his household, they receive salvation. So if this man had just said, you know, I, I, I am just on my own, I'm fasting, I'm waiting upon God without prayer, how will he have received directions? How will he have received that? Right? And so some of us are scheduling so tight. That is why we go we, we on fasting. We try as much as we can with the ministers to go to see, make sure that we, 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 we arrange some time for us, you know, to meet in the church or also maybe on, in, in, uh, through the Zoom room so that we can pray together with you. And it's so funny that some people, they are still so busy. They don't have the time. Mm. Mm. They don't have the time. Come to church, you don't have time. Go, go to the Zoom room, you don't have time. I wonder you when you have time. And you're going to wonder why is the problem piling up. See, there are things money can solve in the life of a man. There are issues it cannot solve. That is the truth about life. The earlier you get it, the better. So some of us have gone, to, giving our life to seeking, seeking money, seeking money, seeking money. I pray you will not have problem in Jesus' name. Amen. There is time for everything. So when they say there is fasting and prayer, give your time to fasting. Give your time to the, to, to, to the prayers. A sister was just telling me a few days ago that we had, we just finished our 40 days, uh, sorry, 30 days fasting and prayers. And along the line, I could not even remember. She was even the one reminding me that says that, you know, maybe along the line in, in the church, one of the services, during the fasting and prayer, you mentioned death, death, death. And we were, we were, we, they, they prayed against it. And she was not telling me, she just had an accident. That mommy, I know that, you know, if no for God, I know that thing has to do with me. So you see issues like this. You see issues like this. So when they say fasting, please give yourself to, not only when they say, also your own. When you see things are not working the way it's supposed or you begin to see revelations are not supposed to, you see yourself, some drinks scattered and you know, go for fasting immediately. Or your family, go for fasting among your children. You can do it just your family alone, you know, or do it anyhow. So it's a way that what you gain victory in your life season. And I see you be victorious in Jesus' name. Amen. I see you be victorious in the name of Jesus. Amen. I see you be victorious in Jesus' name. Amen. The God that gave Cornelius, yes, the way how that, that gave him direction, I see you receiving direction from that. Say God in Jesus' Amen. name. You will not be left out. Amen. You will not be left out. Amen. And I pause here to say, in case you are fasting, and God is giving you direction, do this and do that, please don't be stubborn. That's another thing I want to drop here. Some of us will seek God. When it's time for action, we become what? Reluctant. I want you to say, I will not be reluctant. To, I will not be reluctant to heaven's direction. Open your mouth. Say, I repeat that. Say, I will not be reluctant. 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 To heaven's direction. To heaven's direction. To heaven's direction. To heaven's direction. Look at Apostle Paul. When Apostle, Apostle Peter got to Cornelius, he gave him direction. He, he, he preaches us to him. He said, Imagine if when the angel met Cornelius and he spoke to Cornelius and said, Go and invite Apostle Peter. And he refused. He and his family would have died as an unbeliever. And this your situation would have remained the same. It would become worse. Because no situation remains the same in life. Either it grows worse or it grows better. 
And he would have been wondering, God, I'll be seeking you. Because when direction was given, they refused to obey. There are some of us that were fasting period. God can lead you and say, go and source it. Why do you hesitate? God can lead you and say, extend the fasting period. God can say, okay, include the night prayers. You know, whatsoever the Spirit of God leads you, just do. It's very, very important, my dear. For your own good, we are talking about here. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So another thing I have here during our fasting, what make a mess our fasting also is you know uh, effective that can give result is that during the uh, uh, period of fasting and prayer, prepare your heart. The position of your heart during the fasting and pre uh, fasting, the position of your heart during fasting, the position of your heart during fasting, the position of your heart during, during fasting is very important. What do I mean by that? Before you go into fasting and prayers, please check your heart. When you are the type that harbor unforgiveness, don't just bother to fast. Because it would be a waste of period. When you are the type that harbor hatred, when you are the type that is stubborn, when you are the type that wants to do your own way, don't just bother. But my encouragement to you tonight, when I don't just say, don't, don't stop, no. What God expects of you is I put all these things aside. You know, when we have all these things within us, it's carried away the Spirit of God. And the Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. Oh, now if we, if we can do it on our own, we don't need God. So if God is saying, it doesn't like this thing. When the alien will put it away, the better. And even for our own good. Let me show us something in the Bible. You know, in the Bible days, this was so common. The people who go to God fast and God told them, warn them about something. Please, let's see the book quickly. Joel chapter 2, verse 13. Joel 2, 13. Some people call it Joel. Some people call it Joel. Anyone? But I believe you understand what I'm saying. The book of Joel chapter 2, verse 13. Let's see what God told these people there when they were fasting. Verse 13. Chapter 2, verse 13. Okay. Praise the Lord. You see what is happening here? The Bible says that during this, okay, verse 12. Let's add verse 12 to it. Do we come clear at verse 12? Verse 12, go to about 12, verse 13. Okay, verse 12. Therefore, also now, said the Lord, do not ye evil to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. Okay, you see? These people, they were fasting before God. And they were weeping and everything. Believe God will answer their prayers. Look at what God says. Verse 13 we read. He says that. God said that will rain your hearts and not your garments. Because in the Bible, in Bible days, what they do, and uh, the book of Jonah goes to explain it better. Remember the people, uh, people of Nineveh, when God sent Jonah to go and tell them that he would destroy them, that uh, destroy them, uh, said they repent from their sins. What is that what the king of Nineveh and all the people of the Nineveh, what did they do? They rain their garments, they put ashes on their head. This was so common during the Bible day, uh, days. That is what they do. They will put ashes on their hair, they will tear their garments when, when they are fasting. That, that, that is a sign of saying that God, we are sorry. But they, they do this act worldly. But inside their heart, in the day is wickedness. That man, when you hold for heart, when you don't let go. And you say you they fast. Some of us, we are special, special, specialists in this. They say, like, like, I know they, I know they forgive. Like, in life, you can ask me for things, they get, I'm not going to answer. Because when my time, God not answer me. Like I don't if you call me again for a phone, not the picky call. Like I don't know if you call your house again because of what thing you do. You know, many things, decisions we have taken. You know, my man, my no no. And some of us, we are so funny. These are the people that we still play with them. We can still be hitting, eating with them. But inside of us, deep, another act we act against them is a different. Thing. And we say the God that nothing can be eaten from him. Our heart is so exposed. In fact, God sees more of your heart than you see the outward appearance. Remember what he told uh, 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 Samuel in the book of uh, First Samuel chapter 16. When he was going to anoint David, he says that I, uh, he said that God look at the heart. Men look at the outward appearance, but God searches the heart. What is your heart that you are carrying into fasting? Look at where we read. God was saying that what? Read your heart. Now you have the problem. 
and day. Not be all this, uh, you know, some of us we are fasting and uh, 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 they fast for all uh, people to see that we are fasting. We we'll pray aloud that our heart is so heavy and there is a lot of wickedness in, in, inside of it. That pastor, and if it is ever uh, that choir, and if it doesn't it come in my constant praise, I'm not the singer again. As if you are doing for the pastor. That church, I'm not the entire game. God, they hear me. Like somebody won't say. I say, eh, no, I, I want, I they do my fasting and prayer for inside my house. God, they hear me. I don't need any pastor. I don't need any pastor. I don't need any man of God. God, they hear me for inside my house. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We know God hear you. But there, please let them undermine the authority of the priest. Fact, Samuel, that is all we are teaching tonight. But I don't know why I'm talking in that direction. I believe God wants to speak to somebody. Fact, Samuel chapter 1. Remember, Anna has been praying. But until he, she met Ella in the temple. And Ella said, go in this way with you. God has answered the prayer. Samuel never came. There is a importance of a priest over your life. That is why in Israel, those days, they never live without a priest. The king is here. But also the prophet is, it was here. But also there was a priest. So you need a priest that prophesy over your life. You need a prophet. Praise the Lord. Uh, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, you see their heart. God says that what? Rain down your heart and not your garment. Let's put away our wicked ways. That is what makes our fasting to be effective. That even before we open our doing our fasting and prayer, you see God answering. And I see you not being left out in Jesus' name. Amen. I see you not being left out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I see God visiting you in Jesus' name. Amen. Jehovah will visit you in the name of Amen. Jesus. Jehovah will visit you in the name of Amen. Jesus. Jehovah will visit you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And the point I want to have to read today before we draw it a close, we call it today, that another thing we'll do during your night season is watch the company of friends you keep. Watch the company you keep, the company of friends you keep. Permit me, permit me this evening to ask you a question. Who is your friend? Or rather, who are your friends? There are more than one. Who are they? You know why this is very important? Why I'm asking you this question? Because the circle of friends you keep go to determine what happened to you during your night season. Whether you be victorious during your night season or not be victorious. You ask me and say, why do I say so? What have they got to do with me during my night season? You see? Before your night season, it's not when you during the night season you had some of these friends. Before you uh, this night, before the night season, you are that difficult period. Now your time, your time of trial and temptation, you have already had some of these friends. You have been going all along with them. The question you should ask yourself: How much are they contributed? You know, in a positive way to your life. Some of the friends with people we call friends we are carrying. You know, what would I, I would like demonstrate it tonight, just as I, I, I don't have some, uh, some things around very close by now. You know, you know it's like, some of all, it's like tiny wrappers. The first friend you carry is the first wrapper. The second friend is the, the second wrapper. The third friend is the third wrapper. You tie the wrapper around yourself. Tie there around yourself. Because when they become too much at times, you know, when you, 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 you ask uh, uh, too much clothes on you, you will not have free movement. Movement is uh, the, the, the flexibility of your movement become retardated, become difficult. That is how some of our friends are. You know, watch what I said, the example I gave on your body. That is, that is how some of us, we have some friends. It is not bad to have friends. But now some of, some of there are some friends that are supposed not to be close to us. And this will be at an arm length. When I say arm length, far off friends. Well, there are some that are supposed to be close to us, and the ones supposed to be close to you, in fact, is that what they ought to be few, few, few. Watch the, the way Jesus lived his life. The friends that he had, he had levels of friendship. He had his strength as a friend. He had some his strength from from his strength, He had the one twenty as a friend. See the one twenty at the hot paddle. He had them as a friend. From there, he had the seventy two. Remember when he sent them to go and cast out devils. The other one we saw, they said that they sent out the 72, two by two. From there, he moved from there, he had 12, the 12 disciples. From there, he had three, which is Peter, James, and John. You know, that's where the closest, the Peter, James, and John, the closest 
to him. And is why you see in the New Testament, anywhere he goes, almost everywhere, he carried three of them along. They were the closest to him. You see that as science got he is life, he had brains, but then the ones that were closest, they were very few. This year is confidence. This year people can relate his life, his life to. So these are the people that were present in times of his thing. Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, though they fell asleep, but he carried them along. Peter, James, and John to come and pray along with him. Why did he carry everybody? You think having much friends that will bring success, that will bring fruit to your house or, or, or success? No. The more you have that, the more confused your life becomes. Have you not noticed? So let's see the Bible. First, uh, Second Samuel chapter 13. Verse 1 to 5. 2 Samuel chapter 13, 1 to 5. Praise the Lord, Daddy. Please go ahead, man. And it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a first sister whose name was Tamar. And Amon, the son of David, loved her. Verse 2. And Amon was so fed that he first sick. For his sister Tamar, for she was a virgin, and Amon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. But Amon had a friend whose name was Jonathan, the son of Shimon, David's brother. And Jonathan was a very subtle, subtle man. Hold on, ma, please. And, uh, sorry, let me explain something here. What is happening in this story? The Bible says something about David's children. David had a son called Amnon. And, and David had a daughter also called Tamar. Tamar and Amnon, they were both half brother and half sister. Now, two of them, they were children of David, but of different mothers. And the story says that this Amnon, Amnon, that was a son of David, half brother to Tamar, had a friend called Jonadab. And what the character of Jonah that year, where we uh, restored in verse 3, that the, 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 the last uh, uh, statement that ended the verse 3 said, and Jonah that was a very subtle man. When you say subtle in English, it means a very trickish man. Guru Guru man, person, he went not straight. And I want to believe that I'm not, that was the son of David, that was a friend of this Jonah that knew his way to be so, but he not separate. You see, the, the mistake we make about life is that when we are following the thief, we feel that what the thief comes to see those around. Around after, after not be my own destiny. If they see, they bring and come. But you forget one day when the thief no gets, go see you and now you go stiff. Why this be like that? Because now in character. Thief not thief, whether to, to Asad or to a brother or to anybody. Look at it. I'm not no say this is friend, not trickish man. But you see the following. Okay, let's go ahead. Please go ahead, man. Verse 4. Okay. And he said unto me, Why hast thou been if so? Read from them to him, without not them be. And I am not say unto him, I love them and my brother, my brother, my brother, and my sister. And Jonathan said unto him, Lay thee down on the bed, and make the steps sick. And when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, Okay, it's okay, praise the Lord. We can stop here because of time. I will use my mouth to do the rest of the story. You see, when uh, the Bible says that this Amnon, David's son, fall in love, I want that kind of what that kind of love. According to the Bible, if he fell into stop sorry to use the word stupid love with his sister, as sister Tama. And that is not actually love. That is what they will call in English. Uh, what is it called? Infatuation. Because he just won't sleep with his sister. He thing don't rise. He don't know where he wanted where he want, I wanted one. Now his sister he want to use as a scapegoat. So what happened? He was every day. He, the friend not notice it. Every day. He friend not be the way they be before they be smart. He's always quiet to himself. Ah, Jonah that now went to. I'm not my friend. I've been so you be before. What did they happen? What did they share it? Then you tell me now, anyway, what will be friend? If he help you, you say, hey, My friend, no one understands. He asked, ask, and I was okay, but I tell you the truth. You see, that my sister, where that woman bought for my 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 my, my, my papa David, Tama, he the hungry really make I sleep with her. Make I make a lot of story. Now, I say, and that one are your problem. Now, worry, 
He said, hey, no problem, because I don't know, I don't know my sister. I if not that one, no, I know the way, I don't say I'll be specialist in that wuru wuru thing. No, so how you go do and be say, you go go tell your father, David say, you know where. So when you tell your father, say, you know where, yeah, you go say, you, you, you know, feed eat. So you go tell your father, say, for you to eat, and you know, say that your sister, Tama, sabi cook where, where. Make you say, Tama, come to you. Make you call, let Tama come. When he come, you, you come prepare, when Tama prepare the food, you go say, Tama, say, me no bring the food, me, me no call you as I go eat. Make you bring the food to your bedroom. Yeah, from there, you go feed what you want to do to her. And when you read that, that was exactly what uh, Amno did to the half sister, Tama. And, and funny enough, that girl was a virgin. Look at the, the evil thing that the brother did to his sister. Based on what? Remember where we are coming from? Based on what? The evil kind said from a wrong friend. And this is a friend he has separated. He wouldn't have found himself. See, it was his own nice season. That time of his trial and temptation to sleep with his sister. Because he has been used to the cancer, he will cancel of a wrong friend from the beginning. When there was the honesty, there was a problem. Who could he go to for high by? See the wrong friend. And he went there and that one gave him evil, evil cancer. And he went, do you know that this cost him, costed him his life? We don't have the time. Please, I will advise you, go down and study. Chapter 13, chapter 14, you find that clearer what I'm explaining to you. It costed him his life. I'm not. He, 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 he gave his life for this act he did. So please, the, we, the influence we keep matters a lot. Whether we, we come out of our night seasons victoriously or not. Who is your friend? What kind of Pastor is breathing in the church. Somebody, a friend of you is pinching you. I say, no, no, my night. Don't see the talk. Now, this is the way they talk. Now you go listen to. You are so convinced about the message that it's you that God has sent the man of God to talk to. You say no. You just listen, but your friend that mislead you. Who is that friend that is cancelling you? I say tight, not pay again. Not pay again, you go go heaven. Who is that friend that is cancelling you? Say that what well, that choir the answer. Why do you always keep it quiet? Why don't you reply the choir master, the choir leader? Who is that friend that is cancelling you and say yes, all your money you are using for the whole family? Let them, let them suffer. You think he's helping you? No one that is leading into destruction. May you not be destroyed in Jesus' name. Yeah. May you not be destroyed in Jesus' name. Yeah. May you not be destroyed in Jesus' name. Yeah. I used to say friendship is not by force, it's by choice. Somebody that has not helped you during the good time, don't think it will help you during the difficult time. The friend that has been worse to you all your life. <laughs> and the earlier you notice it, the better. You know it, the better. Open your eyes and shout. I thank God we have the Spirit of God. When cancer comes that is not, that is not in line with the Spirit of God, your spirit does not give you peace. I don't know about you. That is what happened to me. My spirit, I, what would I do? I find this uh, uh, just on ease to receive that cancer. I don't know what it is. Then as I begin to see that, I begin to say, ah, okay, these are not of God. There are some people, they are friends, not that we, we just run away. See, there are some people you run away from, if you want to succeed in life. There are also some people you don't need to run from them. They will just keep them far. Far. Hey, they look here, eh? You don't know, you don't know why you're the waka. So that you might succeed, you might save your life. If I'm not have run from Donald that, he would have ended up sleeping with the half-sister or ended the destruction in his life. I will stop here because of time. God help us in Jesus' name. God will help you in the name of Jesus. Amen. God will help us in general in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Before I leave you tonight, yes, our custom in receiving the Holy Communion, I trust you have been blessed, blessed tonight with the word of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's very important that there's power in the Holy Communion. If it was meaningless, Jesus would have asked us to carry it out. Remember in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it says, As often as ye do this, they do remember the Lord's death he is come. Till he comes. Praise the Lord. Amen. In case you are prepared, yours, I want you to lift it before God as you pray. I release the power of God to this holy communion in the name of Jesus. And release the strength of Jehovah. As you take it, your life will not remember the same in the name of Jesus. Healing to that sick body. Deliverance of the oppressed. Every night's evil vision begins to cease in Jesus' name. Amen. Every trouble of the night begins to cease in Jesus' name. Amen. You that lack wisdom, receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. It is well with you. That case is settled. In need of wisdom on what to do concerning that situation, I release the wisdom of God unto you through this holy communion. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for answers to prayers. In Jesus' name. You that receive receive strength to forge ahead. 
In Jesus' name we are free. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for watching. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I really appreciate you. Thank you for releasing some of your time to be with me this evening. And again, I want to thank you for your wonderful comments. There have been a lot of encouragement to me. And also, please, you those of you that have been sharing my video, I want to say thank you. The Lord will celebrate you. Please, also, also, I want to encourage you. Please help me to share this video. Help me to share this video. Don't be the lover or the receiver of good things alone. Share it and the Lord will bless you richly in Jesus' name. Amen. Before I leave you tonight, I want to remind you. Please do fellowship with us online. On Sunday we are online. Yes, yeah, Milano from 12.30 in the morning. Then you find us yes online. Fellowship with us and God will bless you. Also in Varese, we are also online. Yes, or worship with us in Via Christophorus number five, Varese. Also, also we are in Asti. Amen. God bless you. And we want to know the directions clearer of these places. As you know, I, I have uh, said above the churches. Please, the numbers they are on the screen. They are on the screen. Please call the numbers and you receive direction. God bless you. Richly good. Till I come your way next week. Remember, bless. Bye.